There's very few mangakas out there that can show the consistency that Aka Akazaka and Mengo Yokoyari have shown throughout their career. Aka Akazaka not only being able to put out amazing works such as Kaguya Samuel's War, but also being able to put out a pretty good and interesting story with Insta Bullet that got cancelled pretty early on in its storyline. And Mengo Yokoyari being able to put out Skull Switch, but also putting out a multitude of series that helped her develop the amazing art style she has today and the art style she implemented into Oshinoko. With the anime adaptation and the English manga license on the way, I wanted to answer this question. Is the Oshinoko anime worth watching or reading since it's mostly up to your patience? Before we start, I'm gonna give you guys a warning. The only reason you rarely see people recommending this is because everything is a spoiler. Big statements such as Oshinoko covers the dark side of the entertainment industry, the art in this series is amazing, and finally the characters are so diverse and well written that makes this series extremely enjoyable are what I would say to sell someone that doesn't want any spoilers. Because even the synopsis on every single website has spoilers. So expect a couple spoilers such as arc names, character names, and a couple things that happen within those arcs. Oshinoko follows the lives of two recently reincarnated children of the famous idol Ai Hoshino, Ruby who was formerly a sick patient who couldn't go outside to the real world. Due to that, she used Ai's performances as a way to escape until her untimely death. And Aqua, which was the doctor that took care of this girl and later on took care of Ai in secret when she discovered she was giving birth to twins from a father busy getting milk. Aqua was also a big fan of Ai before this, but after realizing this, he died and got reincarnated. This story basically follows Aqua trying to be a star actor, although his reasoning for wanting to be an actor are quite dark and is a huge spoiler, so I'm not even gonna mention it. And Ruby trying to be an idol like her mother. Now, if you're a fan of Kaguya Samalova's War and you're looking for a cute series with a pretty good comedy base go back. I know this, this, and this cover makes it seem like a cute series, but sorry to tell you, it isn't. Yes, there's some comedy parts in the series, but it's mostly put to the side for the main focus, which is the struggles of someone in the public eye. One example being mangakas, which struggle with really tight schedules, leading to very unhealthy lives by skipping meals, having awful sleep schedules, and their apartments looking like an episode of Hoarders. This aspect of being a mangaka is shown through Abiko when her mentor Yoriko goes to visit her and you get a pretty big picture to the struggles of a mangaka. Abiko getting two hours of sleep, her room being a total mess, and also Yoriko mentioning the pretty toxic relationship between editor and mangaka by talking about the two jobs of an editor. First, to make a successful manga, and second, to not let a successful manga end. And the reason I pulled this example specifically is because I'm pretty sure Akakazaka and Mengo Yoko Yari are talking from experience. But this series explores many other jobs apart from this. Music, theater, YouTube, filmmaking, you name it, it's probably there. As far as the anime goes, it'll most likely cover anywhere from 3 to 8 chapters per episode, with maybe the first episode being an exception. If you know, you know. But there's two points within the story that I can see it ending without any episodes coming off as boring. Chapter 39, which is the end of the first concert arc and gives a dark side to an idle performance, which is what most people would expect to be a generic ending. And in addition, this chapter has a pretty good cliffhanger, assuming they're also aiming for a second season. The pacing of this version will seem much like My Dress Up Darling's pacing, as the first season covered up to chapter 39 as well. The second end point will be chapter 66, which is the end of the 2.5D stage play arc, and in my opinion, this is one of the best arcs in the entire series, and also has a pretty massive cliffhanger. And this pacing will be similar to Demon Slayer's first season, as it covered up to chapter 54. Now, some of you might be asking, why am I so confident in the studio that's making this. Koga Kobo's the studio has been around since 1973, with the first animation work being Ushu Kazoku Carl Vincent. And throughout time, they've animated some pretty mid stories, but honestly speaking, these mal rings aren't their fault. But throughout time, they've definitely improved. Some anime that I've personally watched animated by Doga Kobo are How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, Watate and Angel Flew Down to Me, Umaru chan, Gabriel Dropout, Love Lab, and all of the new game series. And putting all the scores together from all of these shows, it comes out to 7.4. So, yes pretty mid. But given this studio, Oshinoko is definitely a smart choice, as they've turned pretty basic 4 comma series to very well animated stories. And yes, whether you believe it or not, they tried their best with Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. In addition to that, the heavy involvement of Aka Kazaka and Mengo Yoko Yari is definitely a huge plus, especially since both of them have had animes in the past. And the final thing that usually worries people, the staff! For director Daisuke Hidemaki that worked on Bunny Girl Senpai and this not very well known series called Naruto Shippuden, a series composition, Jin Tanaka that worked on Tokyo Ghoul, One Piece, and most recently Yuru Camp Season 2, for character design Kanahira Yama, which the most recent character design work she's done is Rent a Girlfriend and Selection Project, and finally as assistant director Chao Nekotomi, which worked on Citrus, High School DX3, and Tokyo Revengers. So purely based on everything that I mentioned, is the Oshinoko anime worth watching? Oshinoko is a series that took the entire world by storm. YouTubers, content creators, hell, even Lisa, one of the most iconic names in anime since she made music like this, are all recommending this series. Yes, I'll admit it, I'm a fanboy and I can be quite biased towards this series. However, Oshinoko has to have some sort of value if it keeps getting recommended over and over again by all of these people. So is it worth watching? Well, you probably found that answer for yourself throughout this video. But me personally, I'm definitely gonna be watching it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe. I'm clearly a fanboy of Oshinoko. Let me know what you guys think about this series. I honestly can't wait for the English physicals to come out. I'm literally just here waiting for it to be available for pre-order. Oh yeah, and one last thing because I forgot to mention it. Akane is the best girl. It's not even a discussion. Those kind of childhood friend, so basically you know where that trope is going. And yeah, deuces!